What's going on guys? I no longer have to say you know what it is, you know who it is. You can see my face. You know who it is. It's Nick Fury. I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be doing my top five video games of 2017. Top five. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh-oh, we're going to go ahead and start with a little bit of controversy here. Mass Effect Andromeda is my number five game of 2017. Look, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. Despite its flaws, despite the criticism, I really, really enjoyed this game. The open world aspect of this game was good. It was great. Now, it got monotonous because they kind of just threw random missions in between, you know, planets and stuff like that, and you went out and did this, and it was just monotonous, and it was just there for the sake of being there, but it was still fun. Driving around in the Mako, or whatever they called it in this game, but we're going to call it a Mako. Driving around in the Mako was great. Uh, all the missions and stuff, meeting the new alien species, although there were two, meeting the two new alien species was great. The Angarans were pretty cool. The Ket, they were an okay enemy, but like I said, it was just another new uh, class of enemy that we got to see a new species and the game overall was ambitious, but you know, it had its shortcomings, it had its failures, but I thoroughly enjoyed playing the game. My big complaint was Alec Ryder was a bit bland. His sister was completely pointless. Uh, my favorite character in the game was probably Drag, the Krogan, and I'm pretty sure he was a lot of other fan favorites of the game as well. The last boss fight was very lackluster. I will admit that um, it was just a lot of repeatable stages this and that run around jump jump dash shoot the boss make sure that you know you get a shield down shoot the boss and you just did it over and over again but regardless of all the things that i've said i stick by my word good game number five next and i know what you guys are thinking nick how can you put a game that was just so critically just trash and everybody trashed the game and how can you put that in your top five games of 2017? Well, look at this. I'm gonna show you why. My top five games played this year were NBA 2K17, Overwatch, uh, NBA 2K18, Destiny 2, which is not even gonna be in this list, and Mass Effect Andromeda, which is at number five. I put so many hours into this game. I put a lot of hours into this game. Mass Effect is my all-time favorite franchise. I am biased in this situation. So yes, it's going to be in my top five. Sue me. Too soon? Is it too soon to put PUBG at number four in my top five games 2017? Is it too soon? It's in a game preview. Should it even be allowed to be in my top five games of 2017? Well, the good thing about having a YouTube channel is it's your YouTube channel and you get to do whatever you want with the YouTube channel. So therefore, PUBG is in my top five games of 2017. Just hear me out. 2017 was a year of disappointing games. We started out with the hype game for honor. It was supposed to be this new sort of of Vikings versus Samurai versus uh, Knights kind of game and it was about fighting each other one-on-one -on -one combat but it just fell on its face after about a week of release the player base dwindled just rapidly after the first few days fast forward to may mass effect comes out and yes it's in my top five games but that was a disappointing game for everybody else here comes september we get destiny that the player base dwindled on that as well star wars battlefront 2 was dead on arrival after the loot box controversy after the beta followed by the fact that i just bought wolfenstein 2 and assassin's creed origins and haven't played them completely through yeah yeah pubg is gonna make my top five easy i know the game is only in preview but it's already sold 4 million copies on xbox it sold 16 million copies on pc the game is a worldwide gaming phenomenon now we know the game has frame rate issues it has performance issues on xbox it's in preview it had its issues on pc and it just released on pc and it's going well i expect blue hole to do the same for xbox here as we go on as we progress the game is still fun go in with a squad if you go in solo it's not as fun make sure you go in at least a duo or with a squad of four and it's just fun. You walk around, it's a game of survival, you drop out of an airplane, you drop into an area, you try to find weapons, you try to find armor, you try to find helmets, you try to find jackets, you try to find any guns that you can, and you gotta outlast everybody. Every so often, there's a circle that you're supposed to stay within as the, as the boundaries, and the boundary shortens every few minutes, and then you have to go to the next location, the circle shortens every few minutes, and it's like a Hunger Games type thing, and the game is just great, great. Lots of fun, the pressure's on, I just got 
got my first chicken dinner yesterday. And if you don't know what a chicken dinner is, that is basically just winning the game and outlasting all 100 people in the game. And I was just a part of my first chicken dinner on Christmas. Merry Christmas to me. The king of platformers has returned. Super Mario Odyssey is number three on my list. Now, let me just start with this. I originally wasn't supposed to get a Nintendo Switch. I was going to get an Xbox One X. My wife intervened, and we sort of had an argument about what we should get. Should we get a Nintendo Switch? Should we get an Xbox One X? I want an Xbox One X. She won a Nintendo Switch. She was very adamant about the Nintendo Switch. Happy wife, happy life. And guess what? I am glad, glad, glad we made that purchase. This game, I did not think this game was gonna be very fun. I thought it was gonna be boring, just jumping around, platformer, jump, 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 Mario. But this game is great. The whole aspect of having Cappy, which is this cap that you throw around and you hit stuff and it comes back like a boomerang. But if you hit certain enemies, uh, you pretty much go into that enemy and you can control that. You can control a big dinosaur, you can control those, control those football guys, control anything. You can be a frog, jump up in the air. Just, Lots of things. This game is great. The platforming is awesome. Music's awesome. Levels are awesome. You go to different worlds after you collect a certain amount of moons, aka stars, just like in any typical Mario game, but they're moons this time. You collect these moons and you can go to the next world. My favorite world was probably New Donk City. That is the gem of this game, New Donk City. It's like New York City, but New Donk City, Donkey Kong, whatever. And it's just a city, elaborate, it's great. And it's the best world in this game. Just, just, just great, wonderful. And there's a mission in this game where you have to find these musicians for the mayor so they can have their big party. And that's where this song comes from, this Jump Jump Mario whatever that you saw me dancing to like an idiot and you hear in the background. That's where that song comes from, the mayor singing it, and you're just running through this level as Mario, jumping around, and you go to 2D, back to 3D, 2D, back to 3D, and that's one thing about this game that I didn't mention yet. The 2D going back to 3D aspect of this game is great. Just, this game is just very, under, was very, under, well, it wasn't underrated, but to me, I did not want to play this game. I thought it was going to be lame. So to me, it's underrated, and it cracked my top five games of 2017. I I can't say enough. I can't say any more. On to the next game. Well, Cuphead and his pal mug man, they like to roll the dice. By chance they can. Do you like raging? Do you like classic cartoons? Well, this is the game for you. Cuphead. Oh my gosh, this game Cuphead. This game was revealed, I think, in 2013, 2014, somewhere around there, and it finally came out this year in 2017. It was made by a very, very, very small gaming studio called MDHR Studios. This game, man, all I have to say is this game. One, let's just go ahead and start with the soundtrack. The music soundtrack is just unreal. I am a music geek, I'm a band geek, I played music in high school, I still play music to this day, and so I am a sucker for anything with a great soundtrack, great music. So we're gonna go ahead and just start with the music here. Studio MDHR put some YouTube videos up and I watched how they recorded the soundtracks for this game and I was all in all in it is just great the just everything just just the, just each song for each different level and it fills perfectly i can't say enough about the job they've done with the soundtrack and speaking of each boss each level being an individual thing no boss no running gun is even close to being the same not even close. Uh, Floral Fury, uh, Sugarland Shimmy, uh, Carnival Kerfuffle, just those are just off the top of my head. Music different, boss different, everything about this game is different. Each boss is individual and it is hard, 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 hard. It's gonna take you at least 10, 20, 
30 tries to get the patterns down before you can beat these bosses and it is frustrating and it can make you angry and it can make you want to give up it can make you rethink why am i playing video games i've done that before <laughs> but all in all once you beat a boss it just it's just so rewarding and it just makes you feel great i guess i remember one time i was in a party with salt and i had been playing on sugarland shimmy for at least four or five days four or five days could not beat this boss i finally beat this boss and the words that came out of my mouth were not very good words <laughs> and salt just started laughing and it, but that's just how the game is you just celebrate every victory and, it, and it's just great and it puts it just makes you invested in this game and like i said it's such a small studio it's already sold i think what two million copies now it's 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 two million copies so far and the studio is just doing great congratulations to the studio they put so much on the line to make this game like putting house mortgages on the line things like that and for this game to be successful as successful as it is congratulations to studio mdhr So, need I say more, this game, hands down, across the board, was 2017's Game of the Year, across the board, why would it not be my Game of the Year? Let me tell you about this game, and you've already read about this game, it came out nine months ago, but whatever, I don't care, I'm gonna talk about it, my personal experience. Legend of Zelda growing up was my all-time favorite franchise playing now that was taken over by mass effect but that still leaves legend of zelda at number two legend of zelda growing up was my favorite game to play i have played almost every legend of zelda from the super nintendo link to the past uh ocarina of time majora's mask wind waker twilight princess the only one i did not play because i was not invested into nintendo at the time was skyward sword didn't play it i heard it was okay pretty good but i've never played skyward sword that was when i abandoned nintendo and when i was on just strictly xbox 360 but as soon as this game starts you're starting as link he's being rejuvenated after 100 years hyrule is in peril and you go through this uh resurrection chamber you go out princess Zelda's talking to you and then as soon as you walk out of the resurrection chamber you go and you just see the entire world the entire land of hyrule i mean you see just from the gerudo desert to uh the zora's domain to uh mount doom mount doom <laughs> I'm, what am i what am i thinking death mountain not mount doom this isn't freaking lord of the rings death mountain where the gorons exist <laughs> the, uh, just when you walk out to me, just seeing the land was just breathtaking and speechless. Made me speechless. See, I'm just, I still, I'm still talking like an idiot. <laughs> But this game takes a lot of elements from a lot of different games. It reminds you a lot of Skyrim uh, with the towers that you have to climb to get regional maps. That reminds you a lot of Assassin's Creed and Far Cry Ubisoft games. Um, the boss fights are not that great. Um, they're pretty simple to figure out once you do them. Sometimes they're frustrating, unlike Thunderblight Ga Ganon. We're not even going to get into that. Thunderblight Ganon was the hardest boss. I literally spent a total of six hours fighting Thunderblight Ganon. Hard-headedness on my part. I didn't go out and explore and get new shields or anything like that i just kept fighting it over and over again my fault my bad but that's a perfect segue into what i was going to go in next the basis of this game is exploration just explore this game just walk out start finding things start going to different shrines different shrines help you get a uh, spirit orb which helps you get heart containers or stamina vessels um and just explore the world and that's the point of this game i feel like it's just the exploration because when you go out of out of the resurrection chamber in the beginning of the game it really doesn't give you much of a tutorial i mean you meet the old man i'm not going to spoil that for you but you meet the old man at the beginning he kind of tells you to go to these shrines. He kind of tells you to climb the tower. And it just gives you a short tutorial of the basis of this game, which is climbing towers to get the regional maps, finding the shrines to get spirit orbs, uh, then going to uh, each area to get each divine beast, which ends up being quote unquote what we know as temples in the last few games and it's just different puzzles each shrine in each different area has a unique puzzle there are some where you just fight fight a guardian and then you you get you get a spirit orb but each of them are different puzzles and i just can't say enough about the game exploration exploration in this game is what you make it because like i said 
after you know you do the first region with the old man after that it's up to you you can go fight ganon if you want to in the beginning and get messed up or you can just go to each area it doesn't matter it's up to you and it's what you make of this game and that's what makes this legend of zelda so groundbreaking versus other legend of zeldas in the past other legend of zeldas have been linear go here go there go here go there even ocarina of time even though it was kind of more open world but you had to go to each region to get a certain item a certain task done and this time it's whatever you make of it yeah you can go here if you want to you don't have to get all the divine beasts it's probably better that you do but you don't have to you don't have to have all these heart heart containers or stamina but it's probably better that you have to but you can go fight ganon right off the bat if you want to you can go to the castle if you want to you can do whatever you want starting at the beginning of this game i can't say that enough i am invested this game is great i see why it won game of the year and it is my personal game of the year for 2017 So there you have it, my top five games of 2017. Let me know what you think. I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for Mass Effect Andromeda, but whatever, it's my video. So whatever. But you know, let me know what you think in the comments. You know, let me know if you agree, disagree. Do you think there should be a game in there that's not in there that's deserving of being in there? Whatever. Uh, I thought about doing some honorable mentions, which I probably will do them now. Um, honorable mentions, Assassin's Creed Origins, Wolfenstein uh, to uh, the new Colossus and um, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Those are my three honorable mentions. I didn't put them in there um, because Mario plus Rabbids isn't really that great of a game. And then the two games that I mentioned prior, Assassin's Creed and the new Colossus Wolfenstein 2, um, I'm not all the way done with yet. So they're not in my top five. So as always, let me know what you think in the comments. It's been Nick Fury. As always, it's all about gaming. It's what you make of gaming. I'll see you guys later.